Okay, uh, Amendment 10. The powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, are reserved to the states respectively. Um, d is this necessary? Did they need this in there? Uh, there was there was debate about it. It wasn't it wasn't really uh, agreed upon. A lot of them thought, well, it's the way it's worded. It's it's obvious that that's what we mean, and and that's just naive of them to think that. You know, let let they're they're assuming that that whoever holds power in the future, whoever holds their office in the future, is going to. Uh, is going to see things the way they do and and is going to have the same reverence for this document that they did the ones who drafted it i mean guys generations later who who could care less about this document and 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 knowing that this this is something that restricts them from doing what they may want to do um it, it, they should have known that you 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 do need to be clear about these things. You you do need to have this in there, and well, they put it in there. Uh, of course, they they also had the uh, the commerce clause and the general welfare clause in 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 section eight. Um, listen to what um what's his name, uh, Madison said. Um, when 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 introducing uh, uh, amendment number ten, um, this is what the discussion was like. He 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 says, I find from looking into the amendments proposed by the state conventions that several are particularly anxious that it should be uh, declared in the constitution that the powers not therein delegated should be reserved to the several states. Perhaps words which may define this more precisely than the whole of the instrument now does may be considered as superfluous. I admit that they may be deemed unnecessary, but there can be no harm in making such a declaration. If gentlemen will allow that the fact is as stated, I am sure I understand it so, um, and, and, and do therefore propose it. So the, these guys, have, I mean, they, they sound naive to me. That's just what it sounds like. It, it doesn't sound like they really had a lot of experience with with very powerful people, but they they did. They were weren't they at war with England? Um, weren't they going through a a, a a revolution these guys i mean they 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 already have an example right in front of their faces of how um powerful men tend to behave but they assume that the men who gain power um in their own government the one that they were creating in the future were going to have the same attitude toward it and and the people it governs as they did um really nice guys really nice stupid naive guys it's just that's what it looks like from where I sit the powers uh, powers of Congress section 8 of article 1 uh, co the Congress shall have power to lay and collect taxes duties imposts and excises uh, to pay the debts and provide for the common defense and general welfare of the United States but all duties, imposts, and excises uh, shall be uniform throughout the United States. So uh, whatever you deem necessary for our general welfare, I can't imagine anything. I just can't imagine anything you could do that couldn't be defended by this clause. Um, any law the federal government wants to write could be defended by this general welfare clause. You don't need anything else, the whole thing. Throw the whole thing away because um, the Congress has the power to provide for the general welfare. Oh, but it's got to be uniform now. You, you, can't, you can't provide for the welfare of Texas and not the welfare of New York. Um, okay, anyway. Uh, to borrow money on the credit of the United States. Uh, to, oh, that make sure you have that in there. There's your problem right there. Um, to regulate commerce with foreign nations and among the several states. 
and with the Indian tribes. This is one. I mean, you guys couldn't have thought about this a little bit more so as to clarify. I mean, it's not even a complete. Oh, oh, that's right. It's not a complete sentence because this whole uh, section eight is a sentence. Um, come on, come on, come on. I mean, really, really that uh, 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 to regulate commerce with foreign nations. OK, well, see, these guys weren't in favor of a small government why do they think the 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 federal government needs to regulate commerce okay well anyway this is what they gave us this is what we have this is our constitution guys it's this is the great wonderful document that we should live by that our government should, needs to live by and needs to obey it could obey this and still do whatever the hell it wants uh, to establish a uniform rule of naturalization. It always uh, blows me away when I read an uniform because I don't pronounce it like that. I don't read an uniform. I read, okay. To establish a uniform rule of naturalization and uniform laws on the subject of bankruptcies throughout the United States. They, they're really um, adamant about everything being uniform. Uh, that's, that's great. Just make sure you fuck us uniformly. Um, to coin money, regulate the value thereof, and of foreign coin, to fix the standard of weights and measures. Well, I guess somebody needs to fix the standard of weights and measurements, so why not the government, I guess. Oh, but if we didn't have a government, who would fix the standards of weights and measures? <laughs> to provide for the punishment of counterfeiting the securities and current coin of the United States. Okay, so the, now we ha we we've given our government a monopoly on uh, coining money. That's wonderful. It needs that. What would we do without that? I don't know. We'd have a bunch of different kinds of money that may be worth like one one hundredth of a, of a dollar. Oh, I, I, look, I'm thinking in dollars. You wouldn't even need dollars. You know, folks, before. Um, before they had dollars, they had um, states made made uh, money, and and money was made privately. It was coined by 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 private individuals. It, it, you'd have gold coins, you'd have you'd have silver coins. A lot of s silver coins from Spain circulated in the United States before the dollar, and um, you know what the difference was in value. Um, between states, like in in, in one area, uh, uh, as opposed to another, like if you took a, a if you bought or sold something in uh, South South Carolina, and then you went to um, New York and took that that currency that you got in South Carolina and went to New York, it, 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 the the currency might be worth something different. In, in New York than it was in South Carolina, but the, the, the average difference was like less than 5%. Um, so yeah, it would be different. You, you, there is a, a problem with, with not having a uniform currency, um, but it's really not that big of a problem. So what else does our federal government, what else does our Congress have power to do? To provide for the punishment of counterfeiting the, uh, oh, I said that already. To provide, to punish those counterfeiters. To establish uh, post offices and post roads. Yes, because were it not for the government, who would deliver the mail? You know, you're not allowed to deliver mail. Oh, wait, I don't know if that's still true. That may, may not be true anymore. But there were laws preventing uh, new companies from starting up um, in, in the business of delivering mail. Um, to promote the progress of science and useful arts by securing for limited times to authors and inventors the exclusive right to their respective writings and discoveries. And some people have, have used this to make laws. This one here, well, I don't know why they didn't just uh, appeal to the, uh, the general welfare clause for this, but to set up institutions wh where, where uh, like museums of, of arts and stuff that, that are paid for by the government. They've, they've appealed to this, and what they did is say they'd read, to promote the progress of science and useful arts. See, it says it right there, to promote the, Congress has the power to promote the progress of science and useful arts, and then stop reading. And then they passed the bill, and then, you know, nobody ever read, by securing for limited times to authors and inventors the exclusive right to their respective writings and discoveries. This is so copyright laws are what the... Uh, what that clause 
gives the federal government the power to 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 make <coughs> um and, and some argue that that's not even necessary I, I won't go into that right now anyway what else does our uh, Congress have the right to do the power to do the responsibility to constitute tribunals inferior to the Supreme Court okay I guess we need that to define and punish piracies and felonies committed on the high seas and offenses against the laws of nations wow okay so we need to punish offenses against the laws of nations I guess it's up to Congress to decide which laws of which nations we need to enforce to declare war grant letters of mark and reprisal to make rules concerning captures on land and water to raise and support armies but no appropriation for money uh, to use uh, to that use uh, shall be for a longer term than two years oh just make sure you don't spend money for more than two years at a time on your army um, to provide and maintain to provide uh, and maintain a navy to make rules for government and regulation of the land and naval forces uh, to provide for calling forth militia to execute the laws of the of the Union uh, suppress insurrections and repel invasions so yes all that crap Obama was talking about about having a uh, 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 national defense force what, what do you call it a national defense force that's separate and different from the army a militia right well, he has the power to do that. Congress has the power to do that, according to the Constitution. They can do whatever they want, you guys, according to the Constitution. Um, to provide for organizing, arming, and disciplining the militia. Okay, that's enough of that. I, I don't need to read any more of this stupid document because it, it's, it's so vague. At, mm. D couldn't these guys have have given us something a little more concrete and maybe some laws uh, uh, that would punish members of Congress for writing laws that violate the Constitution? What about that? What about making it so so that it's difficult for for the uh, elected uh, uh, officials to, to 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 violate the laws that they're supposed to follow? It's a bit frustrating. The general welfare clause, um, and to provide for the general welfare. What the? What does that mean? To provide for the general welfare? Well, what is not for the general welfare? I mean, is there any law that I could imagine that I couldn't use that clause to defend? Say, well, it's for the the general welfare. What's what's that mean? Well, you know, welfare. It, it, they'll be better off with this law. And I believe that, so the law is constitutional. Um, really, really, really. Our government writes laws and expects us to follow them. If we don't follow the laws our government writes, our government will punish, punish us uh, by making us give it more money or by locking us in a cage. If we don't want to cooperate, it will shoot and kill us. This seems like a bad situation to be in. What's to stop our, fed, our government from writing unreasonable or even ridiculous laws and then punishing us if we fail to follow them? No need to fear, though. The wise men who founded our government have seen to it that our government can't just write any kind of law it wants to. They wrote laws that they expected our government to follow. They called those laws the Constitution. And if our government fails to follow those laws, we can punish it by waiting until the appointed time and then casting a ballot which makes it so that the offending member of our government may or may not hold office in our government again hmm. now that I say it it doesn't seem like much of a punishment after all we can cast that ballot even if uh, the members of our government don't violate any laws at all uh, there really are no consequences then for members of our government to suffer if they it violate the laws written in the Constitution. So it turns out that our government really can just write any kind of law it wants to and then punish us if we fail to follow the law. That's a bad situation to be in. Ah, but the courts will rule uh, the, legal, uh, the illegal laws uh, unenforceable uh, so that we will not have to follow them. But, but the members of the courts are carefully appointed by other members of the same government for their propensity to decide that laws written by those other members do not violate the laws written in the Constitution. 
And again, the offending members of no branch of government are punished if laws in the Constitution are violated. This is terrible. The Constitution has no teeth. What kind of law is it for which there is no penalty to be suffered in the event of its violation? How, then, is the Constitution different from any blank piece of paper other than that it has words written on it? There is no doubt that the members of our government would be much more careful than they are when writing law if they were subject to a severe penalty for writing an illegal law. How could the wise men who founded our government fail us so egregiously? Yes, they've made an avenue by which the Constitution can be amended so as to give it teeth, but the odds of the group of men so pious as to write a necessary law which would jeopardize their own freedom, even existing, are so remote as to be negligible. And of all of them being elected to the appropriate offices of our government, certainly impossible. After all, we'd then have to lock most of them in a cage. So that's why when it was done, um, Ben Franklin says, when he was asked, what have you given us, sir? He said, a republic, suckers, if you can keep it. So how would you make a, uh, a bulletproof constitution? Like a constitution that your successors couldn't um, distort or, or misuse in any way to do anything that you didn't want them to do. Say you, you want to set up a, a, a kind of government that is going to be consistent and, and, and have the same attitude towards its populace that it had when it was founded. <clears throat> I, I just don't think that can be done. I, I, I really don't. I think the, I'm convinced that the best form of government that can be imagined is no government at all. <laughs>